OMG, you won't believe what I managed to capture on film this week. This massive paludarium, i.e. half land, half water vivarium, we call the Hacienda del Dorado, has become the home of a colony of microfrogs sent in to exterminate some mite-infected zombie ants in order that the mites don't spread to the rest of the ants in the ant room. Well, turns out, the zombie mite-infected ants have long been eliminated, and I've slowly been removing the frogs over time since they'd fulfilled their purpose at getting rid of biohazardous ants. But before removing the final five frogs from the Hacienda del Dorado, I had the craziest idea this week. What if I could move in some ants, but keep these frogs inside with them? What if the ants and the frogs could somehow coexist in the same living space? That would be an incredible cohabitation project I've never before executed in my entire life. And so AC family, today, watch as we attempt to place an entire aggressive ant colony in with some ant-eating microhillid frogs. Will the ants devour the frogs alive? Or will the frogs devour the ants? Or will they do as I suspect? and coexist in a beautiful balance within the Hacienda del Dorado. You're about to find out here on the Ants Canada Ant Channel. Please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon. Welcome to the AC family. Enjoy. Imagine if you could create a world that was in perfect balance. Wouldn't that prospect be worth trying? A world that flowed naturally, like drops of water from a waterfall. Well, I, as the creator of worlds, was able to achieve that today. And what I managed to create in perfect balance will blow your mind. Let's get started on this new chapter in the Antiverse. Before us stands the site of much history within our Antiverse. This ant room, which is home to various ant kingdoms and creatures. But this lush kingdom, the Hacienda del Dorado here, has probably undergone the most intense of changes. If you're new to the channel, it was formerly the home of a huge super colony of yellow crazy ants, an OG colony of this channel, called the Golden Empire, and also one of the most successful ant kingdoms the Antiverse ever saw come to rise. But once the colony was crippled by a plague of blood-sucking mites, the Golden Empire fell and was reduced to a small population of a few thousands. Now, the Golden Empire is still rehabilitating in a separate quarantined outworld, mite-free and healthy. But they will still need more time to grow back to the same massive population of their glory days. Though the Golden Empire has been struggling to regain its footing over the past few months, their former territory has been thriving and is now a purged and cleansed haven and home to various plants, mosses, and aquatic life. Let's have a look into the pond, shall we? The waters of the Hacienda del Dorado house a pair of raspora fish, which pick at tiny organisms living in these waters, as well as some cleaner shrimp, which have begun to breed. Check out that female shrimp carrying a new set of eggs. The waters over time have grown healthier, housing clumps of java moss and colonies of beneficial cleaning bacteria, living as the soft gunk which covered everything in the pond. The water itself has taken on a gorgeous dark tea-colored tint, as it has become what aquarists refer to as black water. This black water makes for a supernaturalistic habitat for the fish and the shrimp as many ponds, rivers, and streams are black water in the wild. The color is caused by tannins, which naturally occur in plants and wood, which I'd placed into the pond as decoration when I first created it. The black water is actually quite healthy for the organisms that live in it. But I think the ones that have appreciated these waters the most were the retired death sprites that also live here. The frogs. The remaining five frogs that live here in the Hacienda del Dorado emerge every evening to gallivant by the marsh and edges of the pond. These frogs, which used to be super light shy, 
when they first moved in, were now accustomed to the safety and security of life in the Hacienda del Dorado, and have learned there's nothing to be afraid of coming out in the open, despite the lights being on. Since the disappearance of the mite-infected ants these frogs were meant to exterminate, I've been feeding them tiny roach nymphs and fruit flies. They've also come to learn that insects often get trapped on the water surface and keep their eye open for the opportunity to grab a treat. But these five remaining frogs were going to spend their final night here in the Hacienda del Dorado as they were scheduled for release back into the wild where they were collected and I didn't exactly need them anymore. The mite plague was a distant problem of the past now and the Hacienda del Dorado, thanks to these frogs, as well as the 13 others that had already been collected and released, was now clean and ready for an ant colony to populate its soils. But there's something I need to tell you, AC family, and I'm not sure if you guys will agree with what I've decided. So the Golden Empire is still recuperating in the outworld, and I do want to still house them in a setup where I can closely monitor them to ensure they're not experiencing some kind of mite relapse infection. It was for this reason that I feared moving them into the Hacienda del Dorado might not be the best idea. Another reason why the new Hacienda del Dorado was no longer an ideal territory for the Golden Empire was because of this area. Have a look up here, above the waterfall. The rocks and vegetation that come so close to the top make it difficult for me to apply a wide enough barrier of baby powder to ensure the ants slip off and don't make it to the top of the terrarium, allowing the ants to escape. It is a danger zone, because if I were to place the Golden Empire back into the Hacienda del Dorado, this area here would be an easy bridge to their freedom out of the tank and into the ant room. So AC family, here was my decision. The Hacienda del Dorado was going to be passed on and inherited by another highly deserving ant colony of the Antiverse. Can you guess who? Let's start. Obviously, the Fire Nation, our massive fire ant colony, couldn't inherit these lands because they would easily escape through that danger zone. And neither could the Dark Knights, our immortal black crazy ant super colony. The Titans, our huge marauder ant super colony, would have been an amazing ant colony to move into the Hacienda del Dorado. However, they too would easily escape this danger zone, as would the bobbleheads. The lumberjacks, our young carpenter ant super colony, were still too young to move into this massive space. The Blood Legion, our colony of Dracula ants, were an awesome choice to move in here because they don't like climbing and are mainly ground dwellers, but were also too young and small of an ant colony to move in. The Platinum Dragons are also still young, and being an arboreal species, could easily climb out of the terrarium via the danger zone. This only leaves us with one final colony. A colony that in my mind was not only ready to move into a larger space, but was also perfect because they don't like heights and can't even climb glass. To the left of the Hacienda del Dorado lies our booming colony of trapjaw ants, known as the Jawbreakers. Jawbreaker fans, this is your hour of glory. The Jawbreakers are an incredible ant colony that started out as a colony of a couple hundred in a plastic jar, but has now blossomed over the course of almost a year into a colony of about a thousand or so, based on my observations of the number of ants foraging above ground. They live in a terrarium known as the Plateaus of Gaia, which they have transformed and customized to fit their needs as the colony has grown over time. What makes these ants unique is their bear trap jaws that they sport on their faces. These jaws are allegedly the fastest moving predatory appendages in the animal kingdom, which open 180 degrees and snap shut with mind-blowing speeds of 126 to 230 kilometers an hour and the peak forces exerted at 300 times the body weight of the ant. As a mental visual, that's like dropping 12 SUVs onto something if the ant were human-sized. Crazy and painful bite from an ant, and believe me, I know this from literally 
first-hand experience. So the jawbreakers, having been problem-free for the 10 months that I've had them, were the most ideal and deserving ant kingdom to inherit the new Hacienda del Dorado. But as I went on to collect the final five frogs in the Hacienda del Dorado, I looked at an insect trapped in the water, which the frogs were likely going to eat up in a bit. And then I looked back at the jawbreakers dealing with a superworm in their current nest. And suddenly, I was struck with the most amazing but ambitious idea. AC family, now hear me out and listen to this. I wasn't sure if it was going to work, but something told me there was a good chance it would. What if we could leave the frogs in to co-inhabit the Hacienda del Dorado with the Jawbreakers? Now here's why I felt it could work. The frogs generally hang out in this wet marsh area, as well as the pond, and the Jawbreakers are more land-loving ants. In her pedoculture, as a rule of thumb, when combining species to coexist in a single terrarium space, you should mix species that occupy different niches within the living space. This way, they do not compete for territory, and it decreases the chance of conflict. But what made this whole trapjaw ant frog cohabitation idea very attractive to me was the prospect that perhaps these frogs, which actually specialize in eating ants and small insects, could be used as a population regulator for the jawbreakers. Could you imagine if we wouldn't have to worry about the jawbreakers overpopulating the Hacienda del Dorado and still be able to keep these five frogs, which admittedly, I've come to love, and not have to worry about feeding the frogs? The frogs could pick off several ants a night and keep the jawbreaker population under control. Now the trapjaw ants are a little over twice the size of the Golden Empire's yellow crazy ant workers. And we saw in a previous video that the frogs could consume 8 to 12 yellow crazy ants a night, which means the frogs could probably consume 4 to 6 trapjaw ants a night. Multiply that by 5 frogs, and that translates to 20 to 30 ants eaten a night. This was a good number in my mind for the size the jawbreakers were at now. Perhaps my calculations were way off, but I was willing to try it out. There was also the danger that the trap jaws would totally swarm the frogs and kill them. But knowing how nimble the frogs were, I knew they could easily leap into the safety of the water area if they needed to. But one thing I needed to test first was to see if the frogs had a taste for jawbreakers. AC Fem, I usually don't feed live on this channel, but frogs require moving prey in order to feed. And this test was necessary to see if our prospective cohabitation project would actually work. So, I grabbed a jawbreaker ant and placed it into the Hacienda del Dorado. AC family, let's watch this in slow-mo for added dramatic effect. The ant was placed onto the moss, and let's watch. pops out from beneath the driftwood. AC family, brace yourselves and don't blink as we're about to watch just how fast a frog can pick off an ant. Followed. The frog crushed the ant instantly using its muscles and bottom of its eyes to ensure the ant was dead and unable to sting the frog nor bite it from the inside. Success! 
The frogs officially will eat the trap jaw ants. Many ants in the Philippines, from where these frogs naturally live, are aggressive stinging species, so I knew the frogs would be able to handle consuming trap jaw ants. I tried a couple more ants, and the frogs devoured them cum gusto. This was it! Now that we knew the frogs loved to eat the trap jaw ants, it was now time to move the trap jaw ants into the Hacienda del Dorado. AC family, this was going to be an operation and a half. You won't believe just how epic the process was. So here was the problem. How to move an entire ant colony of aggressive, bite-ready, and stinger-ready trap jaw ants living in a smallish glass terrarium into a bigger terrarium. Usually moving an ant colony from a test tube, formicarium, or container is easy, as you only need to use light to get them to move out and into a desired space. But in this case, we couldn't use light, and we certainly couldn't bore a hole into the glass to get them to move out by heat. As an added danger, I was afraid to go in with a trowel or digging apparatus in fear of injuring or splitting the queen in half, which would have been the death of the entire colony. There was only one safe way to move the jawbreakers into the Hacienda del Dorado. We had to dump them in, soil, decor, and all. But to do that, we needed protection. I, along with two other friends, wore protective gloves and face masks in case we got trap jaw ants on us. A sting or bite from one of these trap jaw ants would be extremely painful. And to make matters even more dangerous, trap jaw ants can use their trap jaws to jump. Before making the move, I had to make sure the frogs were out of the way, so I guided them carefully into the pond area. I also went in to clear cut some of the excess foliage in the middle and clear the danger zone. I then went in to remove a large piece of driftwood from this corner of the terrarium, where I intended to dump the majority of the soil and trap jaw ants from the plateaus of Gaia. And now here was the hard part. The first part of my plan was to remove the main driftwood piece that acted as the skeleton of the plateaus of Gaia, and as quickly as possible, place it into the Hacienda del Dorado. I knew with this driftwood piece would also come some soil, the plants, and a lot of ants. Here we go, AC family. One, two, three. With the plateaus of Gaia held up against the side of the Hacienda del Dorado, I swiftly picked up the driftwood from inside the plateaus and quickly placed it into the terrarium. Ants were everywhere, but I did my best to stay focused and act quickly. After having removed the main driftwood piece, I could now see just how many ants there actually were. There weren't a thousand ants in the nest. The jawbreakers were easily a couple hundreds of thousands. Wow, look at them. They scurried around, carrying brew to safety. What a successful colony. I then went ahead and carefully scooped handfuls of soil into the Hacienda del Dorado. And with them fell the ants. I made sure to work softly and carefully because in this mess was the queen. And she was the most important member of the colony to keep safe. I knew the workers would protect her wherever she was in here. And? After an hour and a half of careful operation, all the jawbreakers were in. AC family, will you believe that our plans worked? Behold, the new Hacienda del Dorado, the new home to the ant kingdom we call the jawbreakers. Check out all those new tunnels and ant hills the jawbreakers have made in the soils. They've truly claimed these territories as their own. I couldn't look away. It was all so beautiful, so mesmerizing and hypnotic to watch the ants at work. It's amazing that in just two days, they've constructed a subterranean layer to house their massive colony. 
I am certain the new space will give the Jawbreakers much more room to expand and increase in numbers. Isn't that something, guys? And look, it turns out the frogs enjoy feeding on the trap jaw ants every night and will even venture onto Jawbreaker territory to pick a few off before retreating back to the marsh and pond to rest. As I had expected, the ants have claimed the land, while the frogs have claimed the wetlands. Both creatures will sometimes venture into the other's territory, but based on what I can see, both parties are content and beautifully coexisting. At times the ants will shoo the frogs away if they get too close, but the jawbreakers seem much more interested in pre-killed insects than anything else. They've even managed to fish out hiding roach nymphs which managed to evade our frogs back when I was feeding them before the Jawbreakers moved in. The Jawbreakers seem to be thoroughly cleaning up house. Watching all this made me remember that this complex ecosystem of interdependent organisms we set up actually extends deeper into the food chain in this Hacienda del Dorado. Because AC family, get this! If you recall from a past video, insects captured by the Jawbreakers are actually brought in piece by piece into the soils, where they are used to feed colonies of smaller creatures called springtails, which the trapjaw ants just love to eat. I suspect that is what they'll be doing here in the Hacienda del Dorado as well, as these lands are abundant in springtails. Now all I need to do is throw in a few pre-killed insects, which the jawbreakers would feed to springtails, which would be eaten by the jawbreakers, who are in turn eaten by the frogs. What an epic food web, wouldn't you say, AC family? Overall, this was a monumental moment for me and the Antiverse, as it showed me that ants can actually live with larger scale animals like frogs, if carefully planned. I'll be sure to closely monitor this new community within the Hacienda del Dorado, just to make sure there are no problems. But from the looks of things, everything is running smoothly, just like drops of water of a perfect waterfall. I, as the creator of worlds, was pleased with our work today, and I am grateful that you, AC family, have joined us for this new chapter in the Antiverse. It's Ant Love Forever. AC family, did you enjoy today's episode? I'm so thrilled at this new cohabitation project that has so far worked out. Are you happy that the Jawbreakers were moved in? There was still so much ahead in the Antiverse with the other Ant Kingdoms. So guys, if you're not subscribed yet, be sure to hit that subscribe button and bell icon now so you don't miss out on the real life ant drama of the inhabitants of the ant room. And don't forget to hit the like button every single time, including now. It would really help a lot. Speaking of ants, it's officially nuptial flight season in the northern hemisphere, and a lot of you are catching queen ants now. And in case you didn't know, We've got all the top-of-the-line ant keeping gear for you ant keepers at all levels from beginner to advanced, as well as a ton of new and exciting products for the ant keeping community, not available anywhere else. So head on over to antscanada.com and browse through our shop. We ship worldwide and offer full email support if you need us. We also have ant colonies with a queen available in most regions. So go check us out and pick up your ant farm kit and ant gear today. If you're new to the channel and want to catch up on all your Ants Canada lore, feel free to binge watch this complete storyline playlist here, which traces the origins of all the ant colonies of the ant room, so you can follow their stories and better appreciate how these ant kingdoms came to be and why we love them so much. AC Inner Colony, I have left a hidden cookie for you here if you'd like to watch extended play footage of the Jawbreakers living in the new Hacienda del Dorado. And now it's time for the AC Question of the Week. Last week we asked, what do the bobbleheads do with their garbage? Congratulations to Maya Sampson, who correctly answered, the bobbleheads leave their garbage at a garbage site. Congratulations, Maya Sampson. You just won a free ebook handbook from our shop. In this week's AC Question of the Week, we asked, what is black water? Leave your answer in the comment section, and you could also win a free ebook handbook from our shop. Hope you can subscribe to the channel as we upload every Saturday at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Please remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe if you enjoyed this video to help us keep making more. It's Ant Love Forever.